Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a fun equation, a fun tan equation. We have tangent of z equals i and we're going to be solving or we're going to attempt to solve for z. Now why did I call this a fun equation? Let's find out. I'll be presenting three methods. Let's start with the first one. Okay, this time we're going to follow one, two, three. So hopefully you do know, if you didn't, you can go ahead and check out the lecture notes, these two trigonometric identities, which ties sine and cosine to the complex exponential. From Euler's formula or the polar form, we can write cosine z as e to the iz plus e to the negative iz divided by 2, and the sine z as e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by 2i. So sine is a minus sine and divide by 2i, cosine is a plus sine and divide by 2. Just try to remember it, you know, you can hopefully use that as, a, uh, as an aid. Now, from here, we're going to do something magical, right? Tangent z is sine z over cosine z, right? So we get e to the iz plus I mean minus first, right? Sine over cosine minus e to the negative iz over 2i times the reciprocal of cosine, which is 2 over e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. And we want this to be i. How amazing. 2 cancels out. And I want to do this first because this is fun. Like I said earlier, i times i. Cross multiply these only and leave these here, okay? That gives you e to the iz minus e to the negative iz. These are conjugates, by the way. Divided by e to the iz plus e to the negative iz, right? Equals i times i, i squared, which is negative 1. Awesome. Now notice why, have you noticed why I multiplied these only? To get a constant number. Now, we're going to go ahead and erase this and set it equal to negative 1 directly. And then cross multiply. That gives us e to the iz minus e to the negative iz equals negative 1 times the denominator, which is negative e to the iz minus e to the power negative iz. So far, so good, right? Put the e to the iz's together and e to the negative iz's together? No. We're going to go ahead and simplify this. These two cancel out if you add the same quantity to both sides. And these two you can bring together to get 2 times e to the iz equals, uh oh, nothing left on the right hand side, that's a 0. Divide by 2, e to the iz equals 0. And you're like, what? No solution. Why? Maybe if z approaches infinity, e to the iz can approach 0. But wait a minute, this is not a limit. We're looking for a particular specific value. So we don't have a solution. But why is that happening? Let's look at it closely because this only told us that, okay, if tangent z is i, then there's no such z. But why is that happening? Let's look at it from another perspective. And the third method, did I tell you I'm going to present three methods? The third method is going to make something very clear. Anyways, let's do the second me method next. Tangent z equals i. Now, just ignore any rigor, any type of I don't know, any type of detail. And I just want you to draw a right triangle because you can, right? Hopefully. Z is our angle. Tangent Z is I, so opposite over adjacent. And of course, from Pythagorean theorem, let's call this W. And what do you get from Pythagorean theorem? I squared plus 1 equals W squared. But wait a minute, this is not an ordinary I. This is I squared equals negative 1. So these two cancel out, leaving us with 0, which means W is 0. Wow. Isn't that amazing? A very imaginary triangle whose hypotenuse is 0. I mean, that should be a surprise because its height is i. When the height is imaginary, hypotenuse can be 0, right? Hopefully. So, and you're like, are you serious? No, not really. But there's no solution, right, obviously, because we don't really have a triangle whose hypotenuse is zero. So 
This again means one more time, there's no solutions. Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the funnest method, which is the third one. And the third method is really cool because we're going to do some manipulations. So e to the iz, as you hopefully know, is cosine z plus i sine z from Euler's formula, right? Great. Now, here's what we're going to do. This part is very important. I need to use, I need to be able to use tangent c, and tangent c is equal to i. Remember that, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out a cosine, okay, forcefully factor, and then inside I'm getting. Now, this is going to be 1 plus, but what about the sine? Well, if you divide sine by cosine, you get sine over cosine. That's just tangent, right? And of course, you have to multiply by i. Don't forget that. Let's go ahead and write it in a neater way. 1 plus i tangent z. Awesome. Now, here's what happens. When you distribute the cosine over tangent, you get cosine times sine over cosine. Cosine cancels out. You end up with sine, which verifies this. Make sense? But guess what? You know that tangent C is equal to I. Another I, I for an I, okay? That's going to become I squared. But I squared is equal to negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So this is 0. Therefore, this whole thing is 0. But wait a minute. It was e to the iz. e to the iz cannot be 0. Nice. This is basically an accelerated version of the first method. Obviously, the first method took a little while to build because we used the identities. But if you use this formula directly, do a little bit of tangent manipulation, a little trick, you'll get the answer right away. And I think this brings us to the end of this video. And here's the end of this video. Wolfram Alpha says the same thing. Good job. No solutions exist. And here's different ways you can write it. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.